This is All India Radio. In the program spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on successful launch of Earth observation satellite Resat 2B R1. The participants are Biman Bashu, science expert, and Nimish Kapoor, journalist. Today's launch of Resat 2B R1 and nine commercial satellites through PSLV C48 marked a significant milestone for the ISRO, as it was the 50th flight of the PSLV and also the 75th vehicle mission from Shri Harikota. Basuji, please tell us the importance of today's launch. Today's satellite is set to BR-1. One of those satellites which is known as, it's a remote sensing satellite but it works on radar. So it is a radar imaging satellite, that's why it is called Reset. And the difference is remote sensing satellites, they image the surface of the earth using camera in different wavelengths of course. But that needs light and a remote sensing satellite cannot work if there is cloud or at night. But RESAT can work in any condition, under a cloud cover or at night and from any situation it doesn't affect the performance of this satellite. It is basically a radar imaging satellite and radar imaging means that unlike the other remote sensing satellites where they receive the light reflected from the surface of the earth. Radar imaging satellite actually sends radar beams towards the surface of the earth and then receives back the reflected light. And by analyzing those radar signals, it creates the image. And the advantage of this technique is, particular satellite which was launched today, it can detect an object as small as 35 centimeters. So from that height, 500 kilometers, it can detect any object of dimension of 35 centimeters on ground. So this will be a great advantage for the especially Indian Army, especially for surveillance of the border areas. It is also called intelligence satellite because Earth observation satellite or communication satellite deployed for military or intelligence applications. Basuji, ISRO has now entered in international space market and destination ISRO is now attracting US, Europe and Asian countries. In this launch, it has carried nine customer satellites, including one each from Israel, Italy, Japan, and six from U.S. How do you see that this business aspect of ISRO? ISRO has been launching satellites from other countries for many years now. And I think it has already earned about 6,000 crore rupees or something like that by launching other countries' satellites. There is one new organization under ISRO, which is known as New Space India Limited, NSIL, which is now taking care of these commercial aspects. So this is a very encouraging sign and it is happening because of the credibility of the launch vehicles that we have, especially PSLV. Today it was the 50th flight of PSLV and in the past only two failures have been there in the beginning. So this reliability you don't get with many countries and the cost also because Indian costs are much lower than the cost charged by United States or Russia. These two advantages of cost and reliability makes Indian Space Research Organization an attractive destination for countries who want to you know, launch their satellites by Indian rockets. We would also like to know in detail about the reset. Today's launch, a radar imaging satellite, Earth Observation Satellite, is a series of Indian radar imaging satellites built by ISRO, which provides all weather surveillance using synthetic aperture radars. So you please tell us the, about the series of this reset. Today's was the fourth reset. See, RESET-1, it was being developed by ISRO, but key component of that was not developed. So RESET-2, was it was purchased and then it was launched in 2009, soon after the you know Bombay attack. It was realized that we must have better surveillance, especially at night, to check such infiltration and this kind of activity. So RESET-2 was purchased and it was launched before RESET-1. It was launched on 20th April 2009 to be in space ready to monitor the border areas and other possibilities of the kind of infiltration that led to the Mumbai attack. So after that, Reset 1 was launched on 26th April 2012 and Reset 2B was launched on 22nd May this year. And of course, on 11 December, that is today, it was the fourth satellite of the series was launched. But let me tell you one very important thing, that the launch of Reset 2 by PSLV comes only 14 days after the launch of Cardosat 3. Now this quick succession of launches is a record for ISRO and it shows the preparedness of ISRO to be ready with a launch vehicle to 
launch satellites in quick succession. And this 50th mission of PSLV and 75th launch from Shri Harikota. How do you see the journey of ISRO and especially contribution of Shri Harikota? You see, the first rocket of ISRO was launched from Tumba, which is in Kerala, but it is on the west coast of India, Arabians. But the Earth rotates from west to east. So if we launch a rocket towards from the east coast, then it gains an, a speed of about 6,000 kilometers without spending any additional fuel. So a search was made and Sriharukota Island in Andhra Pradesh was selected for a sort of launching station. And then it all the further launches, even for SLV-3 and PSLV, ASLV, GSLV, all the rockets have been launched from Sriharukota because it is on the eastern coast and you know, rockets launched from here gain more than 6,000 kilometers without spending additional fuel. Today's satellite reset 2BR1, 628kg satellite, meant for applications in various fields like agriculture, forestry and disaster management as well as our sub for our army. So please tell us more about the advantages of this satellite in the field of agriculture and forestry. This is an all-weather satellite. That means cloud cover, darkness, even dust and everything, it cannot sort of reduce its performance. So it can work day and night. Now, as you know, the Kharif season, which falls during the monsoon, and during this period, because the sky is mostly covered with cloud, it is difficult to monitor the crop. So, satellite which can work all around, more advantageous to get the monitoring done better about crop diseases, so many other things are there. This way, it is very helpful in agriculture. That is, it can monitor crops even at night and under cloudy conditions, which other remote sensing satellites that we have cannot do. In fact, RESAT was the first remote sensing satellite which could work under all conditions, that is cloudy cover and uh, darkness, built by ISRO. Before that, all the remote sensing satellites that we have, we have about 13 in orbit at the moment, they all work only during daylight. They cannot work under cloudy conditions and they cannot work at night. So that way, RESAT satellites are much more advantageous. But as I told you that this particular RESAT satellite has a resolution of 35 centimeters. That is a very high resolution image. With this you can even monitor movement of a small vehicle or even anything along the border. It will be very helpful for our army and defense. So it is a two-dimensional image it will give? No, it can give three-dimensional also. Okay. You okay. see, it's a radar imaging. So radar imaging is something where you can get the spatial resolution also and also the depth resolution. It also provides its lights to illuminate an area on the ground and take a picture at radio. It scans, you know, it's yeah. just like, you know, it's a radar beam. The radar works, it can spot an aircraft or a ship at sea by scanning. Actually, the satellite scans the ground by sending the radar beam and getting the reflections back and recording it. How it stores the images? Some computer storage or some antenna or something in the satellite? Any signal can be stored. No difficulty because these days the electronics is so advanced you can store on a chip or anything. The thing is that, well, it stores and then it has to send back to the ground also. Because unless it sends back to the ground, we cannot process the image and we cannot really get the benefit of that uh, imagery. Today, ISRO is celebrating 50th mission of PSLV also, Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle. And this satellite Today's launch PSLV C48, how it is different from the other type of PSLV? PSLV comes in three or four configurations. Mm -hmm. One is the core only, that is it has no additional booster. It is used for very light uh, satellites for low orbit. Then you have a large one where you have six boosters. And this one, today it is used, it's called QL version. It used four boosters. So PSLV can be modified, rather boosters can be added or taken off depending on the orbit into which you want to send and the weight of the satellite. Because it was a low altitude, 560 kilometers, it used a PSLV with four boosters, which is known as QL version. ISRO is also planning unmanned launch of Gaganyaan in December 2020 and Gaganyaan manned mission in 2022. ISRO confirmed Gaganyaan manned space mission with three crew members by 2022. What are the interesting facts of this mission, Gaganyan? ISRO has already progressed quite a lot in this direction. Any manned mission, there are a few things which have to be taken care of. One is that after completing this stay in orbit, the spacecraft had to return to Earth. And when returning to Earth, it has to pass through the atmosphere. And a very critical point 
in re-entry of the capsule into the atmosphere is the heat that is produced when it enters the atmosphere because of friction with the atmosphere. So, ISRA has already tested re-entry using a dummy capsule and including the you know dummy inside the human beings sort of thing. They have also tested one thing which is very important because during launch, the astronauts sit on the top of the rocket and if anything goes wrong at the launch time, then they have to be taken to safety. So, that is known as pad abort system. So, ISRA has already tested that pad abort system where the capsule will be taken off and then it will land under a parachute, taking the crew to safety in case of anything happening after the ignition of the first stage. So, these things they have already tested. But a very critical point that they have to do now, the life support system. See, the life support system is very important for a manned mission because to sustain three persons, even four or five days, you need source of oxygen, you need waste disposal, so many things, recycled water or whatever, drinking water. So, all these things, of course, they must be working on that, but till now they have not tested those things. So, before they actually take off the manned mission in 2022, they have to test these things rigorously and then only they can send human beings. Looking at the success that ISRO has in the past several missions, we can be confident that they can do it. It may be also interesting to know about the food used by the astronauts in the space to be launched mission in Gaganyan, some refrigeration system or some cooling system or some shelf life of the food to be no, taken by them. No, you see, shelf life is not a matter of concern because they will go for only a few days. But the way food is eaten mm -hmm. in space is totally different from the way we eat it on Earth. Because, you know, we cannot drink water like we do here because there is no gravity. It will spread all over the cabin. Then food also. So, you have to eat food in such a way that no particles, no fragments can scatter because then they will float in space. Actually, they prepare a special kind of food for eating in space so that the danger of spilling or you know, scattering or spreading doesn't happen. So, all these things have to be taken care of because, you know, even a small thing we take it so lightly on earth where we have a gravity may be very dangerous in space where there is no gravity because anything that you leave free will float around and it can get into anything. Basuji, your message to the Team ISRO scientists involved in 50th mission of PSLV and 75th launch from Sri Harikota today. No, of course, we are all happy and, you know, we can only say hats off to all of them because the way, as I told you, that this mission was taken up only 14 days after the Cartusat 3 mission, which is one of the most quickest sequence in which satellites have been lost and that also perfectly because this shows the readiness and the preparedness of ISRO scientists in performing whatever they are doing. You know, because as I was watching this launch and then the scientists were talking, each component, each thing had to be tested repeatedly and then only they had to be put in this system. So, ISRO is developing, trying to do everything indigenously in India. That is a big achievement for a country like ours. Congratulations to Team ISRO on 50th mission of PSLV and 75th launch from Sri Harikota. Thank you, Basuji. You were listening to a discussion on successful launch of Earth observation satellite Resat 2BR1. The participants were Biman Basu, science expert, and Nimish Kapoor, journalist. The program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. This program is also available on our website newsonair.com. You can also follow us on the News on AIR app for updates. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail.com.